merci bien aussi aux organisateurs de, de cette invitation. And like my predecessors, I'm now going to change into <laughs> their native language. I've been asked to uh, speak in English. I also think in the interest of time for um, His Excellency, our chair today, I will be briefer uh, in English than I would if I was struggling through French or indeed uh, Spanish. Um, it's also the case that some of what I would have said has already been said, particularly uh, by the speaker who preceded me, because my main theme was going to be the reconceptualization of security, and I think you've, you've touched on that. So I think instead I'll focus a little on how do you make the European side of this equation, this new transatlantic region, come on board in a way that is committed and actually makes a difference. And I'm saying this as a European, but you may spot that my, my views are somewhat more British uh, and somewhat more sceptical, uh, certainly in terms of the question we've been, uh, we've been proposed, which is uh, what partnerships do we need to establish in order to control and make secure the tricontinental area? And again, my reaction to this was very much that of my predecessor. Is this going to be another uh, excuse for policing coastlines and sending navies uh, around the world? Uh, particularly in a world where I have to say, sitting in Europe, uh, the whole nature of the security debate is still conceptualized, despite attempts to move away from the Cold War, very much in east-west terms. Uh, we've already heard about the Russian fleet appearing in the Mediterranean, how dare they? Uh, this is very much a European, and I would say also US, uh, concern. You will see the focus of attention and action recently has gone ever further east, areas that we might say used to be controlled uh, by Russia or the Soviet Union, as it was then, is now being attempted to be controlled. And I'm thinking of Afghanistan, but it's spreading, as we know, into Pakistan. So this is what is taking up, if you like, the mental space uh, of Europeans in particular. So when we're looking south, what do they see uh, coming from this region, particularly West Africa, let's say, since it's closest? They see themselves as being on the receiving end, if you like, of other people's uh, security threats. In other words, if we're talking, as, as we just did, about the main dangers in this region are the transnational uh, dangers of organized trafficking of people, trafficking of drugs. What the European Union particularly sees is the end result of migrants trying to come in illegally, and they are illegal by definition because so few of them uh, actually can acquire visas and come in legally, so they are almost uh, by the definition uh, illegal. And there's in, an increase in sub-Saharan migrants coming up through the Maghreb, which is of great concern. We've seen incidents even in recent weeks of boat people and disputes between Malta and Italy over who is actually going to take them in and how they're going to deal with these people. So it's not something that's going to go away. The problem is, is that being seen on the receiving end, and we can also say the same of networks of drug trafficking, which itself, I understand, doesn't just start uh, in the Gulf of Guinea, but actually starts well over into uh, Latin America. In other words, the networks of cocaine and other hard drugs that come up through uh, the Sahel region, through the Sahara, actually start in Latin America. Again, the European attitude to this, they do send ships out to the Caribbean, so the Caribbean does exist in their conception, uh, but it's much more a question of trying to stop it. And I think if we're looking for recommendations of dealing uh, with this region, it really has to start, it seems to me, in the region itself. I think there's, there's often a, a sense that no framework, no network will actually work unless the US is in it, and we heard examples uh, this morning with the, uh, the PSI, with the G20, if the US and the major European powers are on board, you stand a chance of actually getting something done. I think in this case, one way of reconceptualizing this whole area is for the countries of the South, whether it be uh, on the Atlantic coast of Africa, the African states you mentioned, uh, and the Latin American states, actually have to start working out for themselves the messages they wish, very simply, to get through to the Europeans, that they are not just on the receiving end of somebody else's security threat, that they are implicated, as you've said, in the marketing, in the, cons uh, the consumption, uh, the use of drugs, indeed the use of illegal labor, because even though uh, migrants are deemed to be illegal, many of them get in because European economies have use for them, and when they no longer have use for them, they throw them out again. So let us 
unpick some of this hypocrisy and actually say this is uh, an area in which security is indivisible and the way we've dealt with it in the past has been all too divisible. We will pay you to police your coast so that illegal drugs, illegal migrants don't come into our area without recognising uh, that this is something uh, Europe is implicated in too. I also think another way of uh, dealing with these issues is, uh, over the last few years, and particularly since 9-11, security has been used as a blanket term, frankly, by those who don't like something going on uh, in order to focus on it and even deploy military and other uh, defensive me measures to deal with it. Whereas I think we have to break down, for example, migration into the reality of what it is, which is part human tragedy, part economic crisis, the results of an economic crisis, the fact that people have to move whether they want to or not, for economic reasons, for reasons of poverty, um, and it's part criminality, because it is a very well-organized racket that people make a lot of money out of. So there's another economic pull factor, which is you make money out of people trying to migrate, and those on the receiving end, those who are the migrants, are those suffering. The same thing with drugs and trafficking. Yes, it's a crime, but we treat it almost exclusively as a crime. There is a huge economic imperative in this. People do not traffic drugs because they make no money out of it. I'm a, a new aficionado, if you like, of this wonderful uh, American television series called The Wire, set in Baltimore. I don't know, it's become a cult in the States, but it's certainly catching on in Britain. And it's about the policing of drugs. And it's very clear, even in a city like Baltimore, and here you can replicate this in different areas, there are a lot more people implicated than criminals alone. Uh, it rises up to the highest political levels. There are all sorts of people who have an interest in these things going on. Now, we have to be more honest about this and actually say, at what point is this getting utterly dysfunctional? And at what point do we have to unpick uh, the different parts of the chain that lead into this? Mechanisms are indeed required to deal with this, but I think it's only when we get a, a better redefinition of what the core problems are, and actually for this region, this new transatlantic region, particularly the southern part of it, to explain in much more detail the cause and effect. So if we're starting with something, for example, in Cap Verde that moves up through the Mediterranean, sorry, up through the Sahara to the Mediterranean through North Africa, I think there should be an understanding of what the push and pull factors are for these networks of crime, drug running, and terror, indeed, <laughs> all are, and unpick the component parts so they can be dealt with in appropriate fashion. And I fear if we carry on talking about everything being a security threat, we will move away from the essence of it, which was again touched on by my predecessor, which is a focus on human security, because without sounding too idealistic, if you create jobs, if you focus on uh, the economic uh, and political well-being of the populations of these regions, the incentives for engaging in illegal activities, in things which risk the stability of the whole area and region, are diminished. And I think this is an area where we talk a lot about human security, but because it's so complex, because things are so interrelated, very little in the end is done. And I'm the last person to suggest that development should be under a, a security umbrella. What I'm suggesting is that the security umbrella actually is reduced to what actually needs a military and defensive component, what actually needs a lot more focus on law, order, uh, criminality, intelligence sharing, and what actually shouldn't indeed, and a large part of migration I put in this basket, shouldn't be anywhere near discussions of security. So I don't think I'm, I'm here, I, I have to say there's, there's certainly an Anglo-Saxon approach in what I want to say, what uh, uh, Elliot Abraham said this morning about create a network rather than, rather than an organisation. I'm not in favour of an organisation uh, because I think the problem is by the time it's set up, the, the problems are too urgent. I think one needs to start with coalition of individual states in parts of the region. So within West Africa, for example, to actually unpick what the elements of the problem are, and then explain them and get some attention for them, and do not put up with the idea that it's your problem, you sort it on behalf of the Europeans. The Europeans, despite the economic crisis, still have resources. As has been mentioned, the British government still has resources to renew its nuclear capability. How about suggesting that they uh, reverse that decision, that we don't need Trident, but we do need something a little more focused 
uh, in this region. And actually encourage the idea that while Europe and the US, and this is my last sentence, oh, I'm, I need less than two minutes, are still focused on the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, there is a North, as uh, Jean uh, quite, quite, quite rightly described, there is a North Atlantic area which is very well organized. How is it to interact with the South Atlantic area without it being on the terms set by the North Atlantic partners? There are models within the, with the NATO model, if you like, uh, which could be adapted to the South. But my suggestion is the South really has to organize this, the templates, if you like, the reconceptualization of security amongst themselves first, and sell the idea to the North. Do not wait for the US and Europe to lead on this one, because I fear they won't.